Hi guys, this is Frenchie and today I want to show you a DCTL that's gonna literally change your look building. And let me tell you, I love this color grading community because this is thanks to our fellow colorists that we have this DCTL and also that I discovered it. So I was at IBC in Amsterdam and I went to eat pizza with Cor Hendrickson and some friends. Around the conversation, uh, Cor asked me which DRT I was using to build my looks. I just told him that I was only using CST and I didn't explore any other possibilities. So something really funny happened. He looked at me with sparkle in his eyes and took out of his backpack his computer put it on the table at the restaurant and started to pitch me the DRT made by Juan Pablo Zambrano, the JP2499. He showed me examples and comparisons and literally guys, I was eating my pizza at the same time and I was sold. You know, it's like the same as elevator pitch, but this one was a pizza pitch. <laughs> And so coming back to mine, I started to play with this DRT and uh, implementing it in my projects. And I can tell you, this DRT rocks. The DRT is completely free and can be found as a DCTL in Juan Pablo's GitHub page. Uh, I put you the link in the description. So thank you Juan Pablo for putting this tool for free on the internet. And thank you Core for making me discover this amazing DRT. <laughs> Let's see what it does. So here we are guys in our timeline. Uh, you can see that I'm not full screen because I'm gonna show you how to implement this DCTL in your DaVinci Resolve plugins. And so for this, it's just ultra simple. You go to uh, your settings over here. Uh, you're gonna go to color management. And uh, if you arrive at the top of the page, you can go down and go to lookup tables and open the lot folder. So when you open the lot folder, it is going to be your whole library of uh, lots. And so uh, what you want to do is that you want to go uh, to your file, create a new folder, and we're going to create this folder called DCTL. Okay, so all the DCTLs that I'm going to download will go to this folder. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to uh, double click and uh, I'm going to copy and paste my JP2499 DRT. And I'm just going to uh, put it in my DCTL. And so what's happening with DaVinci Resolve is that it won't update your DCTL straight away. You won't be able to use your DCTL straight away. You need to close DaVinci Resolve and to uh, restart again. And we're going to restart again. And here uh, you're going to see um, we can apply now our DCTL. So to apply a DCTL, uh, you're just going to type on your search bar in your FX DCTL gonna drop it and in my menu then I have my DCTL that's appearing and so I can apply it okay so so now that you know how to set up your DCTL I'm gonna just tell you why I really like this DRT and what is the effect of this DRT on the image. I just wanted to show you uh, the effect on multiple footages. So all these footage come from the same project that, that I had. And uh, technically there's uh, four shots from an Ari and there's one shot from a Sony. So also you can see the difference between the two camera uh, that uh, the DRT and the color space transform is going to have. So for us, uh, we want to compare uh, what the DRT is doing. So this is good to have first a reference on what the color space transform is doing on the image. So first, um, just for you to have a context, uh, on group preclip, I'm going from the camera to the DaVinci White Gamut color space. So if you see in my color management, I am uh, from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, okay? So now we are on the same page. And um, I'm gonna output in group post clip because I just group per camera my timeline. So then like you have all these Ari 
and this one is alone by itself because it's a Sony and you can see that in my group preclip then we go from Sony to DaVinci Y gamut. Um, so then like I'm gonna put in group post clip um, a color space transform to see what is the effect of the color space transform on the Harry and on the Sony. For us to have also a better view of what's happening with the colors, uh, we're just going to uh, stay on the vector scope. So you're going to see what the color space is affecting in terms of colors. So uh, I'm just going to uh, apply a color space. And uh, this one is just going from uh, DaVinci Y gamut to Rec 709 gamma 2.4. Okay. And so you can see that um, what's happening in my uh, mapping of colors um, is that I'm going to have strong reds that is coming out and a bit of blue because of the uh, light from the car. Okay, so you, we can go to another uh, frame and here you can see that um, my lights from the car that are red will go way over and will maybe be a bit illegal, right? So uh, just to explain to you in the vector scope, if you are going over these little squares, this is considered in broadcast that your red is illegal. So that means that we can have problems on some screens to um, display this color. Here uh, it's pretty stylized. Uh, so it goes really uh, towards the blue, but it was lit this way. So uh, this one, you can see in the Sony that, uh, of course, uh, this is lit pretty red, but this red also is uh, going in the square of uh, red. So it's a bit too intense, okay? And uh, we're just gonna compare it. What we can do now is that I can apply the DCTL that we apply together. So if you see, this is what we have. And uh, let's just compare to this reference frame to see what's happening. This is the GP2499 and this is the color space transform. So out of the bat, if I'm watching these two way of doing the color management, I can say that the color space transform uh, on this image is pretty conservative. And here uh, we are a bit bolder in terms of contrast, which I kind of like and uh, I find that it fits the style pretty well. Uh, but if you also just see on my vector scope when I am with the color space I am towards more red than when I am with the GP. The GP is falling a bit more towards the orange yellow which is pretty interesting I'm not gonna lie because then uh, it creates this very nice orange here then uh, also it creates a lot of separation with the blue from my lights this is the same phenomenon with the blues so the blues are towards cyan in the color space transform but when we are going to the gp you can see that so the blue is falling towards cyan so it's making this kind of curve it's really creating this pleasing separation between the orange and the cyan uh, let's see another example so this is exactly actually the example that Core showed me. And I was actually pretty stunned when he showed me this. Uh, so it's almost the same principle. He, he just showed it to me with another footage with um, Diver, <laughs> I remember. But this is the same principle. So here, what we had with the CST is that the red lights were too prominent and were uh, going way over the legal red. But here, what we have is that our reds are not going over the legal red, but also are kind of falling. So I don't know if you see uh, on YouTube, but it's kind of falling going uh, towards orange yellow. So then it avoids this very saturated red that you can have in the CST and create uh, this very nice red orange that is not too prominent, which uh, I kind of like as a starting point. So uh, 
this example sold me straight away because um, most of the time when I have this issue with color space transform, then I need before my color space transform to compensate to reduce this red. And of course, you know, like you have uh, the tone mapping, the luminance mapping and the uh, saturation compression that can be handy but I also feel that if you see if I use the luminance mapping I'm muting a tiny bit the colors which I also don't want so I think the JP on this is very good so here the JP is pretty nice I would say if I look at the CST same issue for the red lights uh, it's going a bit too much towards red uh, fluorescent, uh, which um, the JP, I prefer actually this kind of red that is going more towards yellow. Here, uh, when we have this color light that is actually pretty prohominent, um, if you compare with the CST, the blue is not so much as bold as, uh, for example, the JP, because the JP will exaggerate more on the blues and go towards cyan so if you see like you can see the the tiny curve that is doing that the blues are doing to go to cyan here in the cst uh, we stay pretty straight and uh, we stay like uh, within the blue spectrum uh, that the light is doing so here on the Sony, uh, what is interesting, because this is a color light scene, especially reds. Reds are always going very fast to the illegal level. If you see, uh, what is nice with the JP is that we are not going to the illegal level. And also like we have a nice red nice dense reds are coming out from the image if you uh, check with the cst here we know that we're gonna have to uh, tone down the red uh, before our cst and so then uh, it will add more steps for us to obtain something that is pretty good i just want to show you the differences between the uh, cst and the jp on a uh, four color gradient i'm just gonna show you on this four color gradient like what is the effect of the jp and so uh, what is interesting when for example you are uh, mapping with a color space transform here i'm using just uh, the da vinci white gamut color space this is making actually the the graph a tiny like more extended and you can see that the colors stay within the same vectors so the same areas so technically it's like expanding uh, what you have already from the image but the jp what is really interesting is that you have all these curvatures that are uh, happening and so if you can see the reds are going towards more yellow uh, the yellows are falling down like that but at the same time you have curvy greens like this and uh, you have blues that actually are falling more towards cyan so what is interesting to just see from this comparison is that the JP out of the bat will create a very strong separation between your colors because uh, it goes a bit more towards the principle of uh, the complementary colors. So it will insist a lot on, on the reds that are going towards orange. And it will insist a lot on the blues that are going towards cyan. So then like already out of your DRT that is just mapping the colors of your camera in Rec. 709, you have a sort of a beginning of a complementary color scheme, which can be very useful when you are trying to create this kind of look. So then I found that this JP2499 was super helpful uh, on my uh, recent projects. So I, I got recent projects that uh, this JP could really help on it. And so also what I didn't show you and I find that is amazing, um, you can regulate the density you can have actually way more uh, power over your uh, DRT, which is great because, I mean, sometimes for CST, I like CST and uh, this is 
the color management I'm using the most. Uh, but I find that uh, with this JP2499, we have the possibility to really tailor our display render transform. So this is great. Also, uh, something to point out is that you can use this uh, DCTL in multiple ways. Here, I used it in a very classic uh, da Vinci White Gamut uh, sandwich, but also you can use, for example, the 2499 log and also in output, we have a lot of outputs. So this is all for me, guys. I really love the color grading community because thanks to this community, I am learning more every day and also like I'm discovering new tools to just have a better craft. And actually, I'm so grateful for Juan Pablo to have put this DCTL out there. I just uh, find it amazing that this is free. If you guys download it and find it useful, I think this is good to consider to buy him a coffee. Uh, so he has a buy me a coffee page. And I find this is a small gesture for the huge tool that he's putting at our disposition. Yeah, check it out. Try, uh, just create your own style with it. I think this is really great. I was about to say the F word, but... <laughs> I caught myself. Thank you also, Core, to have shown me this. Uh, this is why I love this color grading community because we always exchange and we always share knowledge and I love that. Thank you also guys to be here because um, the channel is over 8,500 subscribers and I can't believe it and I, that's so great. Thank you so much. And yeah, I see you for next video. See you guys.